A husband told me that because he's the man and everyone knows that the man has the stronger sex drive, his wife should accept the fact that he had no desire for sex. She did not see it that way, not by a long shot. She said, I have a strong desire for sexual fulfillment. How dare he think that because he doesn't want it, I don't need it. I do need it. And beneath her frustration with their lack of lovemaking was an underlying fear that he didn't want to be with her sexually because there was something wrong with her. She worried that she wasn't pretty enough, wasn't good enough in bed, or maybe that she wasn't the person that he truly wanted to be with. On another occasion, a man wept as he told me about the many times he begged his wife to make love with him. Unfortunately, she refused most of the time, citing one reason or another. She was tired, she didn't feel well, or she turned it on him. You're some kind of a sex addict, that's all you ever think about. Or can't you focus on what's really important? The fact is, she didn't understand how important their making love was, not just to him, but ultimately to their relationship. As he told me his story, his tears weren't only for the memory of feeling utterly and completely rejected by his wife. They were also for the guilt he felt because he finally had violated his own marriage vows by succumbing to temptation to be with another woman. He wanted to explain, I didn't get into this new relationship only because of the sex. Yes, I admit that my wife refusing me definitely had a sexual component, but it was more than that. I felt she rejected me, not just my needs, but me as a person. I understand what he meant. Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Beam. I earned my PhD studying the causes of and correlations between marital satisfaction and sexual satisfaction. I've read the research. I've done research. I know that there is a worldwide consensus among researchers and therapists that marital satisfaction and sexual satisfaction are strongly, actually inextricably, connected. They rise and fall together. We know that with rare exception, a spouse who is sexually dissatisfied is also dissatisfied with their marriage. On the other hand, if they're dissatisfied with their marriage, they're also usually sexually dissatisfied as well. That means that making love with your mate isn't only about sex. It's also very much about the connection between the two people. Now, because you're watching this, I assume that you're the spouse feeling sexually rejected. If so, I have three suggestions for you. Oh, by the way, if you're the person whose spouse says that you reject them sexually, look for the special video just for you here on our YouTube channel. It's called How Sexually Rejecting Your Spouse Affects Your Marriage. Now, it's not an attack video. It's not designed to make you feel bad or to tell you to straighten up and do right. It's a video that will help you make your marriage stronger, especially when it comes to sexual frustrations, while at the same time understanding your side of this question. If you'd like to know when we post new videos, particularly those about relationships, subscribe below. Now, to the three suggestions for the spouse who feels sexually rejected. I'll explain each one in more detail in just a moment, but here's a brief overview. The first one will let you know if you're asking your spouse for something that actually can happen or if it's only going to be your fantasy. The second teaches you the most successful way to approach your spouse about what you want sexually. How you present your desire is a major factor in whether those desires get fulfilled. Really pay attention during that suggestion. And then the last one guides you through what to do if the second one doesn't work as you wish it to, or if the problem is bigger than you think. So here we go. The first suggestion is this. Ask yourself if what you want sexually from your spouse fits within their physical capabilities and within their beliefs and values. I recently worked with a couple where the dissension was because he wanted to have sex every day and she said that physically, all she could do was every other day. 
he saw her reasoning as a cop-out. I mean, if he could enjoy sex every day, why couldn't she? I don't have time here to explain all the reasons, but there is a difference between men and women when it comes to being able to take pleasure in sex. For example, we know that women who are physically or emotionally fatigued find it very difficult to become properly aroused or even to reach orgasm. Now, in the case of that couple that I just mentioned, her clitoris became so sensitive from their sexual interactions that she needed a day to recover before making love again. His request for her to have sex every day filled her with anxiety, not because she was rejecting him or that she was rejecting making love. She was trying to avoid clitoral pain. Yeah, I know. There are ways to satisfy him every day if he insisted, but those methods would not offer her a climax. In other words, it would be quite one-sided. So the truth is that he wasn't being sexually rejected. Instead, he was causing sex to be an unpleasant task for her rather than the two being able to revel together in lovemaking. Now, another guy told me that his wife was rejecting him sexually because she wouldn't have a threesome with another woman in him. For her, a threesome was far beyond the range of her morals. When she refused, she wasn't rejecting him. She was resisting being made to do something that she couldn't do and remain true to her own beliefs and values. He said he understood, but he kept pressuring her. The result was that she eventually didn't want to have sex with him at all because it angered her that he didn't care about what she believed even when he said that he did. She felt rejected by him. Now, if you truly want to have a fulfilling sex life, you won't get it by pushing your spouse beyond their physical limits or beyond their moral limits. So does that mean you can't try new things, you can't broaden the horizons? No, it doesn't mean that. There is a very effective way to find new and stimulating sexual activities that excite and fulfill you that also fit within your mate's capabilities and conscience. It's a website I've done to help couples revolutionize their sex lives in ways that both of you can feel good about. It has several videos. <laughs> no, it's not porn. The videos give insightful sexual information, some of which you may never have heard before. And they're eye-opening and designed to lead you to a great sex life together. On that site, I include assessments that you download and complete privately. Now, some of them give you insight into your own sexuality. Others examine whether either of you may be sexually inhibited, even if one or both of you think that you're not. One assessment analyzes your sexual compatibility with your spouse. As I said, the videos and the assessments are designed to open the two of you to a more exciting and fulfilling sex life. If you want to know more about that, check out that interactive video series, which includes some awesome assessments and exercises that will open your mind and body to amazing sex. It's at sparkyourmarriage.com. Okay, my second suggestion is that the way you approach your spouse about your sexual needs can make a huge difference in the way they respond. It's interesting that some people don't talk with their spouse about their sexual needs, their desires, or what they feel. They expect their spouse somehow to know all those things. A guy like that, for example, may nuzzle up next to his wife after they crawl into bed and expect her to understand the sexual cue and be immediately responsive. Sometimes that works well. She gets the message and they make love. But what if she had a tough day? Or she's really ticked at him for something he said or did, or any number of other reasons that lead her to be sexually unresponsive. In those cases, he nuzzles, she turns away from him, fluffs her pillow, and goes to sleep. He lies there steaming, not only angry for the rejection of his sexual needs, but deeply hurt because this seems to be her pattern, and he feels rejected on several levels. Am I saying that would be a good time to wake her up and have an in-depth conversation? 
Eh, probably not. But rather than repeating that frustrating experience over and again, a conversation needs to occur. Right place, right time, right situation, of course. And that conversation shouldn't be, what's wrong with you? Why don't you want to make love? Or what's wrong with me? Am I too ugly, too bad a lover? When you attack, the other person becomes defensive. That's what human beings do. So no, the conversation should be instead about what you feel, not about what the other person does. If you say, you don't love me, you get one kind of reaction. On the other hand, if you say, I find myself wondering if you love me and it hurts, you'll get a very different kind of reaction. The first way causes the other person to react defensively or even angrily. The second way is much more likely to lead the other person to listen, to care, to understand. Therefore, the conversation should be calm, not forced, not an attack, but a general way of sharing what you want, why you want it, how you feel when you're rejected, and how you would feel if your spouse did what you desired. It makes no difference if you're the husband or the wife. The same principle applies. Speak from your heart. Try to be understood rather than trying to convince your spouse. When they reply, listen to what they say. Really listen. Open the communication line so that each of you genuinely cares about what the other feels what the other person wants or desires. Now, in that same vein, it often helps to explain why you want something sexually. For example, let's say that a wife wants her husband to spend more time with her having conversations, walking together, whatever, and not just receiving his attention when he wants to better. Her desire is that when things do become sexual, he would take more time in foreplay, making it romantic and relaxed. Now, if that's what she wants, she isn't going to get it by being angry or by verbally putting him down. Rather than chastising him, you care about me only when you want sex, which accomplishes nothing good, she would start by telling him, you know what really turns me on? What gets me excited, really excited? Then she lays out the scenario of the kind of relationship and the kind of sex that she wants, being sure to explain to him why each thing she tells him matters to her and how it makes her feel and why it will lead to greater sexual excitement and enjoyment for both of them. Maybe something like, I love it when you spend time with me just talking. It makes me so much more want to make love to you. And when you take your time doing, and then she fills in the blank with what it is she wants him to do, being specific about what sexual things she likes for him to do, she continues something like, it excites my body, it excites my mind, it excites my heart. Now, that approach is so much more effective in getting what she wants both outside the bedroom and inside the bedroom. Or maybe she wants him to do a specific thing to her sexually. Rather than simply telling him what she wants him to do, she also tells him why she wants him to do that and how she would feel if he does. Maybe something like, when I was a teen, I found one of those romance books that women used to read. I found the story erotic. When it got to the scene where he did, and then she'll insert the other sexual act that she wants, I found myself lost and sexual desire. Since then, whenever I remember that story, I'm overwhelmed with sexual desire, lust, but not just for that sexual act, but for the man who will do that to me. I've dreamed about my man, my lover, you doing that to me. Will you be that fantasy fulfilled lover for me tonight? Will you do that to my body? When you do, I'll feel amazing sexual excitement, but more importantly, I'll be lost in my love and lust for you. Or let's say it's a guy and the guy wants his wife to do something. Let's say he wants her to do a, a very sexy striptease 
Rather than simply telling her what he wants, he explains why he wants it and how that would make him feel. He could even add how it would affect his actions toward her. If she says, I'm not that kind of girl, he responds with assurances of his respect for her, but couples that with why her doing that is important to him. If you want your spouse to comply with your desires, the why is always more important than the what. Let's say that the husband shares this with his wife. I was invited by my college buddies years ago to a strip club. I didn't feel comfortable staying long, but in the short time I was there, it got to me. Since that day, I've always wanted a wife who would understand how that slow, erotic dance would affect me in very powerful ways. Not only my body, but my mind, my emotions. Knowing that she would do it just for me would bring every one of my senses to its peak. I don't want to see any other woman do that for me. Only you, for only me. Now, of course, if you tell your spouse a story like that, it should be true, not one that you make up, not anything that you fabricate to get them to cooperate. As I said earlier, speak from the heart. This is crucial. When your mate knows why you want something, how you feel when they sexually fulfill you, and how you feel when they reject you, whether they mean to reject you or not, you have a far greater chance of getting what you want than if you demand it or demonstrate anger about it or simply expect your spouse to understand why it's so important to you. Now, my third suggestion is that if your desires and requests are within your spouse's capabilities and morals, and if you are open about why you want what you want, speaking in terms of what you feel and how your spouse's cooperation would make you feel, but your spouse still rejects you sexually, realize that the problem very likely needs professional help. For example, if there's abuse in your mate's background or rape, or a previous relationship where sex was used to control, humiliate, or shame, then your spouse should see a well-trained counselor who's effective in helping people overcome those terrible kinds of things. Now, the suggestions I've given may help even with that kind of background because they've worked with some couples that have had a background like that, and I hope they work for you. However, if they don't, then please find the right professional help. Now, if your spouse doesn't want to go, use the same principles in my second suggestion. The way you ask can make a big difference. Ask them to do it for you as well as for themselves. Be supportive. Be very careful not to come across as controlling or you'll make things worse. Now, if the problem isn't based in a previous relationship, or abuse of any kind, consider that your sexual difficulties may be a vivid reflection of your relationship with each other. If your spouse views you as controlling, uncaring, selfish, or a number of other things, then they won't get excited about fulfilling you sexually or any other way. Even if you tell why you want what you want, they're probably thinking, yeah, it's all about what you want. Everything focuses on you. You don't care anything about me. If that's the case, remember what I said earlier about the correlation between marital satisfaction and sexual satisfaction? You aren't going to make your marriage or your sex life better until you do something about the problems in your relationship. Now, that's especially true if you've had an affair or if your spouse knows that you've been into porn that makes it much tougher for them to respond to your sexual desires and needs. Nevertheless, there is a way, a good, effective way to get past that and have a great sex life between the two of you. We know we help people with all types of relationship problems, including affairs. I've done research with people we help and confirmed that when their relationship gets much better, their sex life becomes much better for them as well. If you know, or at least heavily suspect, that your sexual problems are based in problems in your relationship, please call us 
We're experts in helping people repair relationships. Check out our website at marriagehelper.com. Check out our other videos on YouTube. Subscribe to know when the new ones become available. We work with every kind of marriage problem you can imagine, from affairs to just not liking each other. We can help. We can guide you to the best resources for your situation. We have everything from articles and videos to phone coaching to an amazing three-day workshop. To learn about any of these, call us at 866-903-0990. One of our client representatives will tell you what we can do for your situation. No, it's not a hotline. Our CRs aren't counselors or coaches, but they're experts in understanding what you need and letting you know where to get it. Call us today. We want to help.